Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, this was a sort of expected to follow on video, really, uh, for this 1084 monitor you saw me repair in the previous three videos there. Uh, I'm going to make up a cable um, for RGB. So, handily, you can see on the uh, back page of the uh, uh, manual here, we've got uh, you know, a pin out here for uh, both TTL, you know, uh, digital RGB, and analog uh, RGB. So, uh, I'm going to make up an analog cable here. Um, I'm going to have a SCART female. Um, connector on one end uh, and as you can see the only connections I need is uh, well I figured it was only like five connections and it is it's like ground red green blue composite sink effectively uh, I mean obviously there's a couple of pins that go to ground I think but uh, yeah uh, five uh, cores is all I need so I've got some uh, cable here that I used to fix um, a, a controller I might just show that video I wasn't going to upload it was a cruiser I just had to replace the cable and uh, change a micro switch out on it um, so I've uh, yeah, got some of the right cable and um, I've got some nine pin uh, male because uh, it's like it's female on the uh, back of the uh, 1084 monitor there so I need a male connector it should be dead straightforward um, there's not going to be much to show you but I thought you know you might be interested to see some of my other systems working I'll perhaps uh, test the mega drive see if the mega drive works with it um, and uh, SNES maybe and uh, possibly the PC engine I think um, and just let's see what it looks like. So I've got a recycled uh, SCART connector here. Um, the downside to this is there is no um, grommet. So as you can see, I think it fits. Uh, which way around it goes? It go like that. Yeah. I think that'll fit over there. But then there'll be a cavity here. I can always just uh, put something over there, and there's a hole on the side. You can maybe use a grommet. I've got some grommets, and I can feed the cable in from the side. That's probably what I'm going to do. But before I do that, obviously I just need to remove all the bits of the wires I've snipped off here from wherever I took this from. Uh, previously, I think it was from an old uh, one of those little wireless transmitters or something. It was awful, and you know, since like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff came into existence, it stopped working. It was just inter you know everything would interfere with it. In fact, even the microwave interfered with it. Um, it was in a different room, but whenever my wife was using the microwave, it would uh, <laughs> interfere with the TV signal. So yeah, it was a piece of junk. It was only twenty or thirty quid, I think. But I did manage to salvage nearly all the bits from it, including the power supplies and lots of cable and loads of components and things from inside the the, the transmitter and stuff itself. So thinking about this, what's the point in having a massive long cable, you know, even just one that's several inches, a few inches, when I can just do it in here, you know, so I'll have, uh, you know, the scar end in there, and then what I can do is cut a piece of ABS, I've got some acrylic, and stick it inside there, cut out a hole, you know, for this, and have it mounted like that. Uh, and as long as I get it to protrude like that, uh, I'll just check on the um, back of the monitor, make sure there's enough space, but hopefully I should just be able to just plug that in. The switches and things might be an issue there, I'm not sure. So I did some basic testing there with just a direct uh, through connection. That's not working. Um, I do get um, colour up on the screen which seems to be representative of what I'm displaying. But it seems like a sync issue, so I think what I'm going to need to do is take the composite signal. Uh, I think yellow was composite, yeah it was. Um, and run it through a uh, sync splitter. Um, so this is uh, yeah, I think stripper. This is I don't you can see this. It's an LM one eight eight one sync stripper PCB. This was from OSH Park. Um, so yeah, I've got a few of these. Um, they quite it work out really cheap actually from OSH Park. Um, you know, like a, I don't know three or four dollars or something. You know, with a couple of dollars shipping, it's not not very expensive at all. And they come fairly quick. You know, within two or three weeks generally. Um, so I've got some of the little uh, 1881 chips here, uh, LM1881s, so I'll solder one of those on there. I don't think I've got the SMD components I need, I might have, I'll check, I might have one or two of the caps, but I can always put uh, some sort of you know disc based ceramic caps and things, a resistor, there might be a resistor on here, I'm not sure, I think there is, oh yeah, 680k resistor, sorry I know it's not focusing, um, but we'll have a go um, with that I think, um, and just test it. So you can see what's happening there, just turn the volume up. Yeah, we've got sound, that's the Turtles logo. Uh, and as you can see, it's like there's a sync problem. I think we're, we're lacking sync, or there's something wrong with the sync. If I mess with the switches on the back, just watch, you can just occasionally sort of see the display. Um, but yeah, we're, we're lacking sync, there's a sync problem. So I'll try and show you with Super Macro here, it's incredibly hard to film this and do this, I've got to hold the camera. Um, as you can see, just got some chip quick flux there, uh, and just a bit of either dab or drag technique. Sorry, there you go, you can see that's not too bad, we've got a bit of solder there. 
that second pin needs a bit more solder but as you can see the, the flux uh, is the key here so I've assembled a little board there, uh, it's mucky, uh, I just need to clean off the flux, you can see I've just used uh, a normal uh, through hole resistor there just because I didn't have one but I've got a couple of caps there and obviously the, the chips on there uh, and you can see uh, the important thing is that the dot is on the bottom left here, uh, sorry on this note, it's on the other way around, the, the dot is uh, designated pin 1 is there bottom left and you can see uh, you know it's represented there by that uh, semicircle uh, and this obviously supports the dip type as well as the SOP, whatever it is, surface mode uh, chip there as well. So on the underside, I've got a bit of solder there, I can remove that uh, solder on those four pins, it's not that important really, it's just cosmetic. Um, so on the underside, uh, and again it's not going to focus very well, we've got uh, ground VCC video in, s combined sync out I think, uh, VCC and ground. So you could, you know, you can wire that uh, either way there with the VCC in ground but uh, yeah you've got video in and uh, sync out um, so yeah I'll wire that in line with this uh, and we'll see see what happens yeah so the composite signal comes in there uh, it comes down to this trace here now you can see I had a bit of solder on there there is no component here uh, it's marked C234 uh, I think so yeah there's no capacitor there at all um, and it doesn't go anywhere, it just goes to a little pad here, which looks like maybe you could stick a wire there. So on this particular revision, this connector here will not accept composite sync. You know, why accept composite as a, a sync source. All you've got is the horizontal and vertical. So the part of this video you just seen was filmed about three or four months ago, actually. Uh, and in the meantime, I lost the adapter. Um, I knew there was a problem with the sync, you know, I played around with that LM1881 uh, in the previous part of the video there. Um, and it, it's a stupidity thing really, it, it dawned on me after I got you know, three quarters way through that little board there, setting it all up, that there's no, it doesn't help at both syncs, and that was the issue, I was trying to get horizontal and vertical sync from the composite signal. Um, because thinking about it, I'm not sure what else I was trying to do with that board. That board would have given me nothing else, really, other than just the, the, the vertical sync. I think it was the horizontal it lacked. Um, but in the meantime, I saw this on eBay. Uh, dirt cheap, actually, a CM8833 adapter. Um, now, the thing with this, it's already pre-assembled. So I thought, well, actually, rather than trying to find what on earth I've done with that other thing, let's just order one of these. Because it was only, I don't know, six or seven pounds or something, I think. Um, and then I can modify this if need be, but I thought, you know, it's got the right connector, it stands to reason it's probably going to be wired exactly as I need it. Um, so, yeah, I connected this up, um, we've still got an issue with sync, I'll perhaps uh, put, show you a clip up here, a window in a window, just so you can see what that looks like. Um, but it's just, it's, there's no sync at all, so I think there's a fault with this monitor, I don't think it's the cable. I did uh, check the pinouts versus the manual that I showed at the start of this video here on this this cable, and everything seems to be wired correctly. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You've got red, green, blue, ground, um, and then comp uh, composite as used as a sync source. So one of the things I tried earlier was to use one of these 1881, uh, I think it's a 1881N um, chips here. Uh, now, the things with this is I th don't think it outputs um, both of the sync signals, um, I can't quite remember now, but I've decided to look at this one here, uh, let's see if I can show you the uh, there, yeah, EL 1883 so this is a sync separator with horizontal output, yeah, that's what the 1881N lacks, it lacks the horizontal, it's got vertical sync. Now you can actually, you could actually, uh, with some TCL logic, generate the uh, horizontal by taking the input uh, and I think using some inversion there and a couple of uh, steps in the logic to, to, to produce that horizontal with a 188N um, uh, sorry 1881N so you could do that but I, I wanted to try and you know use as few chips as possible uh, and this particular chip is uh, seems perfect for this so you can see the pinouts here um, now I was going to try and reuse this little PCB here with a bit of a modification I've got a few of these um, so you know because the reset circuitry is going to be pretty much the same um, so the first thing I've done is just check the ground connections and the VDD and they're the same on this one here, this has got a 1881N on at the moment. So I'll take that chip off, put one of these chips on, um, 
I may, I think the reset is in a different position, so I might have to just uh, cut the trace wherever that is on here, uh, and just stick a wire to join up uh, correctly. But that'll just save me sticking the reset components on there. Um, and I think other than adding the odd, odd capacitor, um, you know, coupling cap in series perhaps, um, I don't think there'll be anything else actually required. I should just be able to just wire this up. So I mean, I'll de detach all the wires and things from this as well. Um, and the, the, the ultimate plan actually is to mount this within the actual monitor itself because as I showed it's actually lacking um, a connection on the composite, you know the composite on the uh, 9 pin uh, uh, D type connector there on the monitor uh, it goes nowhere, doesn't do anything, so I figure feed it into this internally power the, the VCC sync ground from the monitor uh, and then just feed the horizontal and vertical sinks to the relevant places um, in the monitor and all being well I think that should work so I got the new chip on there, I just need to clean that up um, so the ground connection, uh, the VCC connection and the reset are all in the right place actually so it should be just a case of uh, just feeding the composite in to this uh, and then the H and V out and then just mount this somewhere inside the monitor I think so as I showed before, the uh, signal doesn't come across here, so we can uh, hijack the composite uh, signal here on this pad from the connector. I just need to find where there's a plus 5 around here somewhere. There are some TTL chips nearby over here, so we should be able to find a plus 5 somewhere around there pretty easily. I can you know, test continuity to all the points around here until I find something. Um, and then just initially, I'm going to mount this little Franken board thing just hanging off underneath uh, just to test it when I know it's working all right then I'll find somewhere to mount it um, you know more suitable yeah VCC ground horizontal and vertical here which I'll put straight to the connector uh, strictly speaking I should pass those through a cap so I might do that later uh, and then the composite which is already going through a cap on the board as well which will like I say will hijack uh, the pad there well we're almost there now um, that's with the MVS. I'll try with the Mega Drive again because the MVS has got a really screwy um, sync signal. You know, it's a slightly different frequency, um, and it could be the level. The level might not be quite right there. So I'll try with the Mega Drive. Let's just see what that looks like. So it's a similar thing with the Mega Drive there. Uh, it's not quite right. You know, it's just like it's not quite locking onto the uh, the sync. There. I mean, I'm playing with the colour and contrast here. Though. There's nothing on the front that's going to be remotely related. Uh, changing the switches on the back, yeah, they're not having any effect whatsoever. That's the TTL slash RGB switch, and then the other parts uh, again are just do the size stuff. They're not really going to stop that rolling. So I'll show you what I've been doing here. With the scope, I measured these uh, the signals here, the H-Sync and the V-Sync coming out of the little chip. Uh, and the, the one with the black wire there, as you can see here, if I just measure to ground. Yeah, so I have a short to ground. This So this connection here is actually short to ground somewhere. Uh, and that's not normal. So I'm suspecting what I need to do is follow this trace. It looks like it comes across this link here and then comes all the way down here, all the way down the board, you know, right under inside. So I'll take the board out, but I would suggest there's maybe a transistor or a, a resistor or a diode or something somewhere connected to that, the shorted. I think that's what's wrong. Now, when we had a picture a minute ago, it was rolling. I had the H and V around the wrong way, um, and that was a kind of a clue. If you t you know if you if you flip them around the wrong way deliberately, you can actually and you see what I had, where you have the picture rolling at like I don't know four or so times the frequency there. That's a clue that one side of your sync's working and the other side perhaps isn't. You know, assuming you're putting decent sync signals in here, which we are. Um, so I'll dig it a bit deeper and see if we can work out where the fault is. But I'm not convinced there's not something wrong with this monitor. I know we repaired it in a previous video, and I think the caps are all all right. But the one thing we didn't do at the time is test the RGB input, and it's something that's been on my mind for a while. Um, so you never know; there could be a fault. So I think there is. It's not normal to have a short from one of these sync uh, connections here to ground. So after lots of messing about trying to follow the short on this, trying to work out what's going on. I think it's this resistor here. 
Um, it's a short, it just measures as a complete short. Um, I'm not sure the size on that, I can't really see. It looks like it's yellow, purple, black. Yeah, it's not the resistor there. I desoldered the pin, the single pin there. And if you measure the actual resistor from the other side, it measures correctly, 470 ohms. So the short is across this diode. So I'll remove that diode. Uh, so here's that diode, as you can see. It's just a complete short. So I've swapped that diode out. Let's just check now. I've got one probe on the ground here. Just testing continuity from ground to ground. Yeah, we've got short. Uh, and let's just check to these horizontal and vertical sync connections here. Yeah, no short. We had a short before. I think it was on the black one there. Phew. So we're close, but no cigar. It's not quite right. Uh, th but again, this could be due to the Neo Geo sync here. So I think I'll try it again on the Mega Drive to see what that looks like. Oh wow, that looks absolutely awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I need to play with the picture settings and stuff there. But hopefully, uh, if that's focusing alright, you can see. That looks sweet. Excellent. So the good thing is, my uh, adapter works fine there now, with the horizontal and vertical coming, you know, it's been split from the composite signal there. Uh, it's just the Neo Geo. Um, now I might be able to do something with that. Might be able to add a cap or a resistor or something onto the uh, composite signal there because I suspect that's what it is. I suspect the composite signal is just not quite right. I need to check the uh, the level on the scope actually. Uh, and that's an important point to note. If I hadn't used the scope on this, I didn't uh, really show you me using it very much, but. I was looking at the um, horizontal and vertical sync sec, uh, signals there, and like I said, that was the point where I noticed one of them was completely flatlined, and I thought, what's going on here? So, I, of course, I disconnected the cable, checked from the cable, the cable was okay, um, and then I measured on continuity on my meter and found a short between um, one of those, I forget which one it was, I'll put a comment up here, whether it was the H sync or the V sync lines to ground, and that was where I then they followed, it was like down the rabbit hole, you know, followed it. Had to pull the board out, follow the trace all the way up to its destination there, to that 74LS86. Um, and then again, I couldn't quite work out what was going on. I desoldered the pin on the 74LS86 there to isolate it, and the short wasn't on the chip. So, you know, the input on that uh, that chip there where that signal goes, that wasn't the fault. Uh, the only other thing connected was that resistor in the diode. Now, initially, I thought it was the resistor, so I did the similar thing, desoldered one pin of the resistor, then me re measured the resistor, the short had gone, and it was measuring 470 ohms. Measuring back on the board, we still had the short, and the only thing that was there was the diode. So I swapped that out for 1N4148, uh, and that looks fine. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be really sweet, because now I can just use that SCART adapter to plug devices in, you know, for, you know the systems and things, Saturn, the Saturn and the SNES maybe. Um, PC Engine, I think, should work now with that via RGB, which will be sweet as well. So as you can see, the CPC is working uh, perfectly on there as well. So it just seems to be the Neo Geo Sync is not quite uh, right. I mean, it does have a, a slightly weird uh, frequency, actually. It's like I say, it doesn't run at 60 hertz. It's like 59.3 or something, or 59.93 or something. It's a bit bizarre, the uh, exact frequency of the Neo Geo. You can uh, do a mod there to you know just change the actual uh, one of the crystals on there to get it near to 60 um, although it's not that easy to get the crystal well I don't think you can get a crystal the right size some people use like a little uh, frequency generator of some sort of programmable one uh, to solve that problem on the Neo Geo to get exactly 60 Hertz um, but I think for the moment I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna now mount it inside clean it all up you know tidy up the work I've done there um, and just test it on some of my systems, use it for a period of time uh, and then I may revisit it for the Neo Geo to see if there's anything I can do to get the, the you know, the MVS uh, and the AES. I mean the AES be, would be an interesting test, I'm guessing I'm going to get exactly the same problem with the AES but uh, possibly not. Um, I've got a PAL AES I think, I don't know, what, I can't remember whether I did the region mod for it, I don't think I did. Maybe my PAL AES will work okay in RGB, so that would be a useful test as well. So I figure whilst we're here, I'll actually show you the uh, horizontal and vertical uh, signals that are coming out of this little device here. Um, bear in mind, this is with the Neo Geo, so it's not optimal. You can see, you know, we've got some like flickering and slight like, little pulses. Um, 
going down there so you know there, there is an issue with the, the signals there but the levels are approximately the same actually as they are on the Mega Drive so that's our test 200 millivolts uh, test signal uh, we've got roughly one division there so probing the horizontal uh, yeah you can see there's our horizontal um, pulses and if you look at the vertical there's our vertical pulses let's just try on the other pin yeah there you go vertical uh, I'm not sure why it's bouncing around all over the place actually uh, as you zoom out you can see the much a, there's like a larger pulse going on there so I'm not quite sure what's going on with that so I've cleaned up my little board there, uh, got rid of all the flux and stuff off it, brushed it down, it's, uh, it's looking pretty clean. I removed as much of the solder off this side, I put all the wires on that side. And what I'm going to do, there's a nice space uh, sort of here actually, uh, I get a double sided pad, I'll clean up the solder points here where I wire soldered on in a minute. But I'll get a double sided pad, it'll stick off the board like that, there, and it'll be firmly stuck down, there's nothing on the underside like I say that would interfere. And it'll just stick like that and then I can just join my wires up. Uh, to the destinations no worries at all yeah so here you go this is the stuff you can see it's fairly thick um, so it will I'll just cut piece to size stick it under there and stick it on the board so I'll just show you a bit of this obviously I've stuck it down now uh, just got some uh, fresh uh, solder and flux and shorten some of these wires you can see this one it's one of the sinks uh, coming across here so I'll just carefully solder that on so that's the two sinks Connected up there now. Just get the VCC in ground and then the composite in, and we're up. So there we go. Uh, I don't think that's too bad. It's really, really well secured there. You know, you can't pull that off. It's really uh, sticky, uh, and the wires are dead short, fairly stiff. So, you know, I doubt we'd ever have a problem with that, really, uh, unless the chip fails. You know, that's a possibility at some point. I've got fluff all over my tool there. Um, so that should be it, so I think I'll just uh, reassemble it and uh, have a tinker. As you can see, looking sweet. Yeah, so a massive light glare in here, sorry about that, uh, it is actually working. You don't really need to see it working, uh, just while I waffle the outro here. Um, but the thing is, you know, obviously it's working perfect with the Mega Drive. I tested it with the uh, PC engine. Um, I'll perhaps show you a clip of footage up here of what that's looking like. It's not quite right. You've got like little jitters down the display. Um, and the same thing, exact same thing happens with the Neo Geo. Now the Neo Geo, I can kind of understand because as I mentioned earlier, it's got a, a weird uh, non-standard frequency uh, it displays at. Um, but the PC engine, in my mind, should work. Uh, now I did only test with the Super SD System 3 and I've got a prototype uh, here. Um, I did experiment with uh, resistors and caps and things like that on both on the sink, primarily the sink, you know, the, the, the composite coming in. Um, I tried adding a, a terminator resistor, you know, a 75 ohm resistor on the composite signal. Made no difference, none at all. Um, the only thing I did find is when I was experimenting with the PC engine, if I completely bypassed caps and resistors on the, the, the video output from the, the console, it was a little bit better. Um, but you still got it. In fact, it was a lot better, I would say, <coughs> but you still got the problem when certain things were going on in the game, you know, uh, depending on what was being displayed. So, there's, there may well be part uh, 5 to this series on the 1084S here. Um, you saw it working on the Amstrad uh, CPC there, works perfectly. I haven't got around to testing other systems, but the fact it works on the Mega Drive here, you can see it's, you know, it's crystal clear. So as I showed at the start of this video, it is super easy, you know, to wire up your own little cable to go from one of these 9-pin D-types like this uh, to a SCART uh, female, uh, you know, socket there. Um, sometimes, you know, convenience is a factor, you know, that's that's the reason why when I couldn't find my cable after three months of this being on sort of a standby, uh, this project, uh, I just went and ordered one, I thought, let's, you know, just be done with the thing. Uh, but I could have, you know completed that cable the cable wasn't far off you know it was it was right actually the wiring was right i just needed to stick it in the housing and stuff and i would have been done uh, it's ironic isn't it it's like the minute the new cable turned up and i went looking for my monitor power lead i found the adapter with the power lead actually which is uh, yeah that's just irony for you but uh, anyway it looks a lot better you know the one i bought looks a lot better so you know these little pcbs here from osh park um, are brilliant uh, i'm not sure whether it says who's created that yeah, I think it does, just down at the bottom there, you can see, uh, 
Kansalakangan. 2016 I think that says so yeah I'll post a link to OSH part where you can order those they, they work out dead cheap you know ordered three and they were like a, I don't know a few dollars or something shipped and it turned up within a week um, so I mean I've got a couple of spares of those and the nice thing is as you saw uh, you know this is designed for the LM1881 uh, but the uh, 1883 was it EH, ET? I think it was ET, I can't quite remember the part number now. Uh, I'll stick it up there. The alternative uh, chip that I ended up using that outputs uh, H-Sync and V-Sync fits the same. Um, and the reset circuitry is the same. It's got the same connectivity there. The power and ground is connected the same, uh, as is the composite in. So, you know, the 0.1 microfarad cap there, 100 uh, nanofarad cap, um, the composite goes through um, is the same. Uh, and let's say the reset circuitry exactly the same so you know you don't need to uh, do any changes to that at all it's just a case of using the little breakout pads down here uh, to tap off your H-Sync and your, your V-Sync you know so despite this being designed for an LM1881 it does work with the uh, 1883 chip so the other thing I didn't show is uh, I also added in the monitor this morning actually on the connections here because that was my wires went to the pads there actually so on the connections on the edge here I just put a uh, 100 nanofarad cap and a 4.7 electrolytic uh, just you know over those connections there you know the two of them in parallel just so that it's got some uh, decoupling that board anyway hopefully you found that interesting thanks for watching I'll see you soon